All right, not so positive here. Salt <laughs> may lead to a higher risk of type 2 diabetes, according to the findings of a new study. And joining us to talk more about this is medical contributor Dr. Richard Shafu. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you both. Um, what did the study say, and how did it link salt to diabetes? So, so Maria, the study was essentially uh, what we call a retrospective study of uh, of about 400,000 uh, people that were in a data bank in the UK over a approximately 12 year period and what they found was that people that seem to have a higher salt intake seem to have a higher risk of type 2 diabetes. Uh, there, of course, we're not sure if, if it's a real, you know, direct cause and effect relationship because the important thing I think for our our, uh, our viewers to understand is that when we look at medicine, we look at studies, uh, there is what call, what's called a gold standard for mm -hmm. studies and that's really a prospective uh, double blind, blinded study. So what are studies like that are where the examiners on either side don't know the data and, and it reach conclusions based on scientific evidence and you set the study up ahead of time so you have a control group and you have a study group and you're studying one factor. It's hard putting those kinds of studies together of course on mm -hmm. historical data. Data. This is you know uh, less evidence based. Uh, more anecdotal in a sense, but but it's good to get the conversation going and realizing that you know having too much salt in our diet can have it. We know has a detrimental. Yes, yeah, so they look at the numbers and they say, well, this group mm -hmm. seems to have gone this way. Who had more salt? This group had less, right? Exactly. So let's talk about salt. You know, it's it's, it's in a lot of things that we eat. Certainly, exactly. it makes things taste nice. Right. And better. Um, <laughs> and I better. I literally got the, uh, the information about our interview today as I was pouring salt on my eggs this morning. Yeah. Mm, Dr. Chef, not going to be happy with me. So, uh, so uh, what, what does salt do to so, us? So, Let's salt is essentially a, an important element. I mean, it's an important element in our cells' metabolism, in our, in our fluid electrolyte balance. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a vital element uh, that, that we have. And so, um, if we have levels of, of salt or sodium that are too low, that can have significant uh, health implications. Um, for example, you, th you think of when we get uh, people have, uh, you know, a large uh, uh, virus where they've lost a lot of their fluids, mm -hmm. uh, heat exhaustion, all of those can be associated with what's called hyponatremia or an inadequate amount, and that can have cardiac implications, but the reverse is also true. So if we have a, a relatively high level, which can be harder to get, mm -hmm. um, that can also have you know negative health so what's, benefits. So what's the right amount? Is there like a number? So it depends. It, it really more depends upon, there's a serum sodium that we that doctors look for. So when you go see your doctor and they do tests, they, they look for you know a range and ranges are a bit different based upon laboratories and based upon age and whether it's a pediatric or, or adult population. But the interesting thing is that in our diets, uh, Andrew, in Western diets, we already have a lot of salt in the diet and, and a lot of the processed foods that we all consume, that we all love, unfortunately have a lot of salt already in them intrinsically. So the concept of adding even more so, you know, is, is adds insult to injury. And we do know uh, that we've linked a high salt intake to hypertension. Mm -hmm. So certainly that's a factor to, that, you know, doctors so recommend. Go with what they've already minute. given you and don't, don't, yes. <laughs> don't uh, hyper, uh, I don't know. Hypertension, hyper, there you go. Hyper sodium your body. That's you right. Yes. I mean, it's hard because so many foods have it. What can we do to reduce the intake, really? So, so being a great consumer, you know, looking at the label on what we're consuming. If you're going off to a fast food place, a lot of times they'll have a website or they'll have they'll have a menu where you can really and look and see. The, the the interesting thing about the study is that uh, the the salt intake in the group of people that had a higher incidence of type 2 diabetes were also people that tended to be overweight, mm -hmm. that tended to be sedentary, uh, more often uh, perhaps African American uh, people, which we understand unfortunately have a higher risk of, of diabetes, stroke, heart disease, sickle cell anemia, a lot of other illnesses. So, so that's why that data is interesting mm -hmm. for us to have the conversation, but it's more uh, interesting, but, but not, not strong scientific mm -hmm. evidence and something we already sort of knew. So how do you separate that factor out? Because it's not the only risk factor, of course, that's uh, associated with, with type but, 2 uh, diabetes. Yeah. Bottom line, just uh, reduce your salt intake yeah. somehow. Or at, least, yes. at least go with what at they've least. given you and, and don't make it worse. Right. <laughs> don't um, make it worse, Andrew. Thank you. I'll, uh, my eggs will not have good. Yeah, it tastes good. It does. It's hard. Dr. Yes. Chapu, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, still ahead, a special election being held in San Diego next week to fill the District 4 supervisor seat. We're joined live by one of the candidates next. You're watching the Fox 5 News at 1.